Let's take a look at what's new in HDR Graphics version 2.11. As always, there's loads of new features and fixes. The first thing to take a look at is this new control room view. So if I open that up, you'll see what loads up is a preview, an output, and the rundown as well. So I can go through my rundown as I would usually do. And then I can show a graphic on preview. And when I'm ready, I can show it on program. And now I have a view of both of those at the same time and the rundown in one view. If you have lots of graphics on your rundown like I do here, another new feature is in edit mode. You can edit graphics and give each one a custom label. So you can call it anything you want to remember exactly what that is. So for example, I have two lower thirds down here, which are very similar, first line, second line. But if I edit each of them, I can give them a specific name. So this one can be LT1. I can close that and then edit this other one and call it L. T2. Now in my rundown, I can see a quite clear difference between the two with a little label saying that's LT1 and this is LT2. Another new window added is the new social only window. So if I go into the social tab here, open that up, you'll notice that it just loads the social window. And that means that my chat comments and stuff can come in just here. Or I could grab this URL, open it up on a browser somewhere else on the network. If I change to my network only mode here, I can open that up somewhere else on the network and use that or give it off to somebody else and they can manage just the social section of H2R graphics. I'm back here in the control room now and another thing that's new is the per graphic transition. Now before you would set transitions based on the theme, but instead now I can set it per graphic. So for example, I have my lower thirds one and two here and I can show my lower third one. It slides in and slides out. I'll show lower third two. It also slides in and slides out. But if I go into edit mode here, into my theme options, I now have this transition override section here. So if I jump into that drop down, I can choose to scale and fade the second lower third there. So I'll show one, it, sh it just comes in as a slide, and then I'll show the other, and it will scale and fade in as well. The final feature to show off is a little bit more technical, and if you're used to HTTP requests, it'll make sense to you. If you're not, then it's something you need to learn a little bit about. I have documented it as well as I can over in the documentation. There's a link below this video to that. Otherwise, it might be slightly outside of what you're up to these days, but I'll be sure to make more guides and helpful information in the future about how to use this next feature in social called HTTP Listener. So I'm back over in h to our graphics here and you can see in the add data source section, I now have a HTTP listener option. And if I add that data source, it pops up and says, learn how to send JSON to this URL, HTTP, the IP, the port, the data, and then a data ID. Now I can click on this, learn how to send JSON and it'll take me to the docs and learn how to do this. But for now, I'm just going to copy paste this data source ID here, the U41, and yours will be different, and pop it in this other tool that's called Postman. Again, if you're not familiar with HTTP requests, this Postman service is just like a little app that I can send HTTP requests with. So I'm gonna use that just for the purpose of this video, but you could build something custom for yourself and use that instead, and I highly recommend doing that. So I'm over here and I have my base URL, which is the IP address, I have my port, I'm gonna send data to this data ID. And then in the body section, I have set up a few things here, which you'll see in the documentation, of course, but I have a messages array with a snippet and the display message is what's gonna show up as the message, message one. Then I have some author details. So John Barker sending the first one. Maybe we can make Sean Barker send the second one. And then we can make uh, someone else, uh, Lon Barker send the last one. I don't know, is that a name? Maybe. One thing to note here is I do need to send a unique ID with each of my messages. So this one I'll just set as ID one, this one as ID two, and this one as ID three. But be sure in your tool to set a unique ID for all messages throughout your social session. Okay, I'm gonna go back over to h our graphics, open up my rundown, and then in the social section here, you'll notice there is nothing in there right now. I have not sent any messages yet. But if I go back to Postman and send this post request here, send, it pops up in H2R Graphics. So this is the perfect way to get your own custom messages into H2R Graphics. You'll notice here that there's a little zoom icon. That's because I have set a profile image URL to just be a random PNG that I stole from the good old internet. It's a zoom icon 
and I'm using that here as a as a placeholder for um, for the image. You could send in your own custom images uh, as long as it's a URL, but for me, I've just grabbed this Zoom icon, and then now I have these uh, Zoom messages that I can show up. So if I open my output over here. I can show message one and it would show up just as you'd expect any social message to show up. And you'll notice there's a nice big border around social messages now when they're on there. There you go. That is the look at the custom HTTP listener now built into H2R graphics. There's plenty of different ways to explore this HTTP listener thing and send data in there. In fact, Jonas, the creator of PlayAP and who's been on this channel before, has already made a Zoom OSC JS sample piece of code you can check out on GitHub and have a play with and try it out for yourself. Here's the repo on GitHub and you can see already that there's a source in here, all open source, and you can use it with Zoom OSC and then send those messages in to H2R graphics and it'll work nicely. I've also made lots of fixes and improvements that you can check out on the website as well to see what's new in that area. But otherwise, let me know if you have any issues or any fixes or any future ideas. I'm always listening. Let me know in the video comments below or send an issue and feedback on the website. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.